So you've officially picked your character, you've picked the game that you're going to be playing, and you've picked the controller you're going to be using. Congratulations, we can now move on to the next steps. If you have not already watched the previous video, I'm going to put like one of those little annotation dudes up there. Uh, hopefully it pops up right as I say that. Go back, check that video out, and then come back here. And we're going to be talking about a few different things. Uh, the next steps, as it were. The, the major topics that I want to go over, learning your character's moveset, practicing within the tutorial or the training modes, and then finally, it's okay to lose. So those are going to be the three major topics. And some of these sound pretty basic, right? So we're, we're going to kind of get into that. But first off, I want to talk about how best to watch videos and learn movesets. So there is going to be a bit of a learning curve on understanding the communication and the lingo that's in fighting games and in just that a lot of the FGC uses. So to help with that, there is a fighting game glossary. I'm going to put the link down in the description for you to check out. I would highly recommend while watching any fighting game content, have this open. It's just make your life easier. The next thing that I would highly recommend having open, if possible, is the numpad notation. So I'm going to throw that, like, throw images up here um, right now for the numpad notation. And this is roughly what it looks like. I'm going to, it's probably, maybe I'll probably put it over here. This is roughly what it looks like. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And this is how you're going to be reading pretty much any of the combos going forward. Speaking of combos. I mentioned that you want to learn your move set of your character. I did not mention learning combos. And there is a kind of a deliberate reason for that. I would say while starting out into your game, I would not jump into learning combos for your game or your character. I would recommend learning the move set of your character. The reason for this is because while learning combos, if you can learn the move set of your character first, you're going to understand better what makes up the combos that you're working on. And it'll just make you understand your character way better overall. What numpad notation helps with is understanding the directional inputs that need to be inputted to be able to get out a special move. So with that in mind, I would highly recommend if you're playing any of the fighting games, going in and learning what each of the moves look like kind of what they do and then eventually you're going to be able to just start slowly being able to build up to things like bread and butter combos which are just combos that you can just get out at any point getting out a bread and butter combo is also going to help you understand like longer combos down the way um, and then learning tournament combos you know safe combos that still do big damage but you can also get them out reliably that's something that i want to make sure that i express for you guys uh because numpad notation at first is a little bit jarring uh, but it's pretty easy if you have a numpad on your keyboard you really don't need the numpad notation up somewhere some of us are mad lads and we have 10 key lists uh, we don't have a numpad on our keyboards and that's when i would recommend having one up so uh, a two three six is going to be a forward quarter circle right so it's going to be starting it down on the d-pad or whatever movement that you're doing starting with the down input and moving and sliding all the way up towards the forward direction and with numpad notation it always assumes that you are on the left side of the screen and it is up for you to interpret it if you are on the mirrored side numpad notation will always be two three six will be a forward quarter circle two one four is always going to be a back quarter circle pretty easy so just keep that in mind uh five is neutral five means no inputs at all five it, you are standing entirely still you're not touching any of or pressing down any of the movement keys on your controller five is entirely it's just considered neutral so with that in mind it's pretty easy to kind of understand like what some of these could mean you could probably work out the rest and there's other videos that are going to go in depth talking about the sort of thing and i would highly recommend going to check those out instead i just wanted to bring it up for your awareness the primary part of this is just learning the character inputs so that you know what they do and kind of how they interact for some games like guilty gear there's also a website that kind of goes over your character and all their abilities their frame data you know if they're invulnerable on startup etc etc um for guilty gear that is a website called dust loop um and just for the guilty gear players i'll leave that down below again i'm sorry if you play other games <laughs> i'm a guilty gear player i don't really know any of the other information or websites uh, if you're a Street Fighter player and uh, and you do know some of those secrets, uh, go join my Discord and link them to me. I'll have my Discord link down below. I would appreciate that greatly. That's another game I'm trying to get into. So if you are smart and hip on Street Fighter, hey, hook me up. Man. 
and it'll help out all the other players. So just something to keep in mind. My Discord is available for anybody if you just want to talk about stuff, fighting games, other games, no big deal. Go down, join that below. And just while I'm already shilling stuff out, uh, be sure to subscribe for further content. Uh, I play a bunch of different games. Fighting games is just my current hobby, and I like talking about all of the games that I'm interested in. Thank you guys. So anyways, as we were talking about, learning the moveset is going to be super important. Uh, before you start building into combos because if you don't know how to reliably do the input for those moves uh, it's going to be really hard to do when you're trying to combo him with other moves something to keep in mind um the next thing is uh it kind of leads right into it is using the training mode or using the tutorial modes i'm gonna boast about guilty gear again a little bit more uh, i think that guilty gear had one of the best tutorials in any of the fighting games that I've ever played, uh, but I don't think that it has the best training mode uh, or like practice mode, whatever you want to call it, uh, training room. Yeah, I don't think that it has the best one of those compared to any of the other games. Street Fighter, namely, has much more information on screen. They also just recently introduced a uh, replay takeover mode, so you can go back into a match, you can take over a moment and try to react to something differently. That's a really cool thing uh, that I think that as you are learning how to play the game and understanding more of the information, that sort of thing is going to be super useful in a game like Guilty Gear just doesn't have that. But yeah, so using the tutorial uh, to practice the inputs or using the training room to practice your inputs for your character. And a, a lot of the times what I'll do is while I'm in the training mode, I'll be trying to do the input and I'll have the somewhere in the top corner or somewhere in plain sight. I will have it's kind of like the, um, the thing that shows off what inputs you're putting in. Uh, so usually it's down the side and then they have like the actual controller showing which buttons and like what actual input is coming out. So as you can see right here, I am practicing the inputs uh, for one of the moves and you can see that uh, it shows and mimics each of the uh, movement types that I'm trying to input. And if I ever input something incorrectly, I can just sit there and watch that while I'm inputting because there's no stakes. So I can just stare at that. And uh, let's say I need to put in a backwards half circle and then press forward. A lot of the times for me, I'll forget to slide between the down input and the left input uh, or the backwards input while I am on the left side of the screen. I have no issues inputting this input while on the right side of the screen. Uh, uh, but while I'm on the left side of the screen, um, I tend to have issues uh, inputting this. So there's a lot of the time at the like when I first start playing the game for the day, I will take a few minutes and I'll just practice this input while on the left side of the screen and try to get it out more reliably. And then I'll go into canceling other abilities into this super. Uh, this is something I recommend, uh, but you'll be able to see if I don't input the super correctly, I'll be able to recognize while watching this, which input did not come out. To cause the super to not come out but now that you have the actual inputs and everything all practiced the next thing that i would recommend before actually getting into playing against other players is just playing like the story mode or the arcade mode that way you're going against bots that'll actually try to fight you back this is what i do in every fighting game that i've played uh, it'll give you good practice to going against things and kind of get a feel for pressing your buttons while there's a little bit more of a uh, pressure on you and uh, the other thing that's fun about guilty gear is the tower system it's kind of like their ranked matches i would say that the ranked matching in street fighter is way better but they will both kind of get you in the direction of playing against people in your similar skill range in guilty gear unfortunately it always puts you at roughly a specific area and then you get into that floor and you just end up plummeting to the very bottom and it's kind of a big wake up call like oh just because i whooped that one npc's butt that doesn't mean that i can fight against other good players and it kind of gets you like oh shit okay people are way better than me right and kind of a, a little bit of a humbling experience um, but don't let that ruin your experience and this gets into it's okay to lose and using loss uh, while in a game is going to help you learn faster as long as you can look at it less out of anger and more out of like okay what happened here so guilty gear for me i think had a better learning curve overall i feel like when you were pressing buttons when you shouldn't uh, and you get counter. the announcer is very in your face about it every time you get countered for mashing while you're in the corner or whatever they have a really good like readable input system about like i definitely did something wrong and i'm losing because of it it has you wanting to kind 
kind of test new ways of going about specific scenarios. Um, and I found that to be super helpful. And for me personally, it worked really, really well. I didn't have as good of a time in Street Fighter. Uh, Street Fighter had me feeling like if I just spammed specials rather than any of my normal moves, then that's how I win. But that's not really the case. And I think a game like Guilty Gear kind of helps enforce the fact that normals are actually super useful and they have a lot more of an easy time being legible on when to use them. Uh, whereas I feel like Street Fighter, it might be perceived initially as a little bit hard to understand when do I use XYZ move. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, you are going to lose a ton. And I'm talking about that in like the terms of a game like Dark Souls. You are going to lose a ton especially where you are new to the game. And as you get better at the game, losing is gonna feel different. At the start, you're like, man, I'm never, I don't think I'm ever gonna win a match ever, right? It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. So you just gotta keep trying at it. You gotta keep going after it and just recognize that losing, you're not really losing unless you just completely give up. If you just completely give up on the game, uh, and this goes for really just anything. Uh, if you completely give up after failing, that is when you lose. If you just lose a match or whatever, there's always going to be something that you can learn to try to do better and just continue to progress. So uh, so just something to keep in mind. Losing's okay. It's okay to lose. Losing is very good and it can help you kind of learn at a different pace. And some people are gonna lose way more than others. With that, I wanted to talk about that. I am not very good at these games. I have only just started. I've been playing these games for maybe a few months. I have, um, I don't even know how many hours I have in these games. I have something like 80 hours in Guilty Gear Strive, maybe close to 100. I really don't remember. My goal in the next upcoming videos after this is to show you that it is possible that just starting out now, you can win a tournament. That sounds crazy, but there's a bunch of beginner tournaments and that's, that's okay. I am okay with just winning a beginner's tournament, but I'm gonna try to progress into the other tournaments as well and try to see if I can get some decent placing. Hopefully that can help inspire other people. I'm probably gonna lose a ton. So my first video, I'm gonna show off the tournaments that I've already been part of, and we're gonna move into uh, more up-to-date tournaments and just how I'm practicing. I'll probably try to stream it a little bit, depending on how that goes, whatever. Uh, but hopefully that's something that some people might wanna see. Just a complete beginner. I have, I'm not very good. I have made it up to floor five in Guilty Gear. I think I made it to silver or gold in Street Fighter. Um, and that's another game when I'm, I'm going to try to learn how to play at some point. But I want to focus on Guilty Gear first. I want to try to win one of the beginners tournaments. That's my current goal. So hopefully you guys stick around for that. Subscribe if it is something that you like and hit the like button. The next thing that I wanted to go over is a recap of the last video and talk about some things that I didn't quite mention or that other people in the comments had mentioned. And thank you guys a ton for the comments. They're all super supportive and most of them were super helpful. But I wanted to talk about a few things with controllers that I didn't mention in the previous video. First off, one of these uh, comments here, I'm gonna leave this up on the screen somewhere. They mentioned to really lean into the fact that uh, you should probably use the D-pad over the analog stick. And as they've mentioned, the analog stick is going to have digital inputs. So that means that it's gonna fill in all of the directions between whichever direction you're pressing and headed down towards. So if you're going, we're gonna use numpad notation here. You go four, one, two, that is going to, on a thumbstick, fill in every single direction in that kind of swath of directional inputs. Whereas on D-pad, it is only going to put in four, one, and two. Overall, the D-pad is gonna help you put in more clean inputs. And then also, this leads into the next one, the arcade sticks. A lot of people in the comments have mentioned that the arcade stick is gonna be the most intuitive controller. Uh, I would say personally, if you were coming from, you've already used controllers for a very long time, controller might still be your best option. If you are on the fence of uh, you already need to buy a controller, an arcade stick is probably a very solid option because it's a great buffer in between going straight to leverless. And then it's kind of like a nice alternative to the controller. So you have this nice big box that has really good consistent inputs. Uh, it has the nice nostalgia factor, you know, it, it, the buttons feel really nice to push. You're gonna feel like you are more accurate at putting in these inputs while using the stick because it's a whole lever that your whole arm controls rather than just a thumb pad. So just something to keep in mind. So that might be worth uh, attempting and testing out for other players. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to make sure that I brought up is uh, please, if you're just getting into fighting games, if at all possible, please make sure that you have a wired internet connection. 
this isn't just for the other players you're going against this is just going to be an overall better time for you as a player it's going to make your experience much better uh, if you don't have the option for it that's okay but hopefully you have decent internet connection most of the people that are trying to get into any level of competitive games already probably know this information i just want to bring it up to the other people that just might not there's going to be younger people trying to get into these games and they might all be on wi-fi I would recommend, if at all possible, getting an ethernet cable. It doesn't have to be an expensive one to plug in between your console, into your computer, uh, whatever, so that you can get internet uh, through a cable rather than Wi-Fi. So just uh, a few things that from these comments that I, uh, I wanted to bring up for all of the players. And again, thank you guys uh, a ton for those comments. Uh, hopefully this video is helpful for uh, the next stage of things. And I hope you guys look forward to seeing me playing in tournaments. And hopefully it inspires you guys to try to join your locals or uh, other online tournaments and if you do i hope to see you in them thank you guys once again for clicking on this video hopefully i didn't waste too much of your time i appreciate you take care